the head of developer community at Africa's Talking with over 200,000 developers in it, um, where he creates and executes a community engagement strategy to drive the vision of empowering developers globally to build scalable applications productively. Drawing from over a decade of leadership in developer communities, our speaker will share five fundamental pillars that have proven essential to achieving community success. So please join me in welcoming Michael Kimathy. Basically, building scalable uh, communities and uh, more so sustainable communities is what I do. I've been doing this for a long time, uh, and that's what I'm going to share with you all, and I hope everyone will learn from it. So just uh, quickly, I think uh, you have heard from uh, Ed, but in case you are uh, on Twitter, you can check out Africa's Talking. Uh, where I work at Fife, but also I'm a lead at the class center in Nairobi, one of the biggest, the best, and uh, you know, one of the communities I've been building for the last eight years. Also, I'm a founder of a startup uh, known as uh, Impact Masters. This is where I'm trying to showcase uh, movers and shakers, especially in tech, across Africa. Uh, so you can check it out. Uh, that and also we have a podcast where we share the stories uh, of these uh, movers and shakers. Also, I'm on X uh, as M underscore underscore uh, underscore K underscore global. And if you are dev like me, you can check me out uh, on GitHub as at IBM Kitwin. Uh, so today we'll uh, talk about building scalable and sustainable communities, uh, giving the developers perspective. I think uh, according to what Google did uh, 10 years ago, uh, they did a research that actually predicted that you'll have over 700,000 uh, developers uh, by 2025. Uh, and you're planning to get uh, into 700,000 of 1 million developers who will be there by 2025. Because as numbers changed uh, over time due to the activities that are happening in Africa in terms of tech. So we are heading there. Right now we're at 200,000 developers. Uh, in case you're wondering, at Africa Stopping, we provide communication platform as a service and telecommunication platform as a service. So if you want to access USSB, SMS, or airtime APIs, uh, Africa Stopping is a place to go. Um, so welcome today. Uh, I think this is basically what I, of course, just to give you an overview. I've been doing this for over a decade now. Uh, built various communities, uh, some of them for over 15 years, uh, some of them started them and added over to other people, uh, and some of them I started them and for various reasons uh, I stopped running them, and that's what I'm going to share today. Uh, also, I built a couple of strategies for different communities, which are developer-centric, startup-centric, uh, academia-centric, and some of those lessons are shaped, have shaped most of this presentation. Uh, so our agenda today will uh, look into strategy and, and uh, of course we'll explore more to developer landscape for those who are not familiar with this so that when we talk about various uh, frameworks that we use and the key pillars that we explore to make sure this works you are familiar with uh, developer community. So we we'll begin with strategy and here you always ask yourself what are you doing uh, especially in this case uh, you explore the persona but also the product that you want to present or the technology that you want to present to your persona, regardless of which industry. And then, of course, you segment who you are going to present it to. And for us, developers, uh, you know, beginner, amateur, semi-pro, professional, all the way to the executive. And uh, how are you going to present it? Is it in person, hybrid, virtual, scalable? Uh, is it content-wise? Is it video? Is it just uh, blogs or maybe on uh, Ashnode or any platform that uh, gives people accessibility, such as Discord? And of course, you're going to think about operation because at the end of the day, is more or less uh, you're running a whole uh, self-sustainable ecosystem. So Africa Developer Landscape gives you a perspective of uh, why our key mission is empowering developers. And uh, why developers, as you may ask, uh, that's a question that you have been grappling with even internally. Uh, it's because uh, developers play a crucial role uh, in the adoption of success of technical products. Uh, so if you're in tech and which, you know, uh, someone said some few years ago that tech is gonna hit the, is eating the world, 
right now we are past that uh, and we are already eating the world. So the importance of uh, scaling the community and making them sustainable, you should be able to know that INIC is more than a gathering. Uh, communities actually build their own ecosystem and they chart their own path. And most of the time you should allow that growth uh, to ensure that it is very consistent and people have long-term engagement and when they grow, they still find that usefulness. And then of course, one of the benefits of strong communities is to drive innovation, foster collaboration and support personal and professional growth. Uh, so in this case, the perspective of developer communities uh, always faces challenges uh, when it grows and we're gonna explore some of those challenges with you. So here, uh, when you think about technology today, it is impacting everything uh, and it's moving really fast. So one of the ways that you can catch up with uh, what is moving uh, and what is happening in technology is to ensure that you have a community that is well versed what is, on what is happening, meeting consistently, sharing knowledge, and also ensuring that the, your tools are up to date. Because if you think about technology, if of, uh, any anything changes in that uh, realm, it may be the update of the language or you know uh, the platform that you use, and something doesn't work, the impact is enormous. And you have seen uh, where we don't have access for big platform and we are always wondering what next. So community actually helps you mitigate some of this. Uh, and uh, the influence there is quite, in, 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 uh, quite uh, enormous when we think about it. So of course, developers are the only early adopters uh, who gives you, uh, you know, the test uh, of what you're building. Uh, they give you feedback. And of course, uh, some of them might build with you. And in case, you know, you want, to, you want them to chime in, uh, they're always there to show you what actually works and what doesn't work. And they're very patient to you as you build. And we have seen different tech, tech companies actually uh, drive on building for uh, the community in mind. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, word of mouth, you cannot uh, play down that, especially the community. So uh, of course, other, Places can play a key role like social media conferences, social media uh, uh, blogs, forums. But ideally, word of mouth is 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 really big uh, because at the end of the day, it doesn't just happen. It's just that someone can go even further to to showcase what you have as a technology, and that alone uh, might give someone a chance to explore further because someone else who they respect or who maybe they same community uh, really knows about your product or technology. Then of course, you need to uh, channel feedback in different departments and of course uh, for your customer and address those needs before uh, the, you know, the customer is impacted. I'm sure you have ever heard of this term, the customer doesn't know what they want in the world. And community actually is the one that plays a key role to ensure that you have everything in order before you go live, or maybe in case something breaks down while you're live, you can be able to roll down. Then, of course, uh, if, ad if developers adopt the product, they might integrate it with other tools, uh, and, and enhancing your platform and expanding product ecosystem and making it more valuable to other users, uh, even beyond the realm of technology. Um, and of course, you want to have feedback and improve it. Uh, may it be bug fixes or you need, uh, you know, understanding of the lay of the land because different market actually needs, uh, have different needs. If you go to Latin world, if you go to Latin, if you go to, you know, Europe, you come to Africa, you know, there are like 54 countries, uh, different culture, different languages and so on and so forth. So it's quite very important to have a community to give you the taste of what is happening. Then of course you need your product or your community to be credible. So developers could help with that. Uh, of course, if you don't feel like you are addressing the right in terms of uh, community, uh, you can actually have custom solution before you introduce uh, in different use cases and industries as the market predicts, but also again, for that community to be able to grow. Um, then of course, developer, developers also create tutorials, documentation, and courses, and I uh, will explore different communities that have explored this deeper, and they have grown uh, organically over time and the strategies they have implemented. 
And finally, you have to pay the bills. So at the end of the day, you want to sell subscriptions or services. Uh, and of course, indirect revenue, uh, such as marketplace integration, plugins, uh, or extension, they develop. And these will advise the return on investment uh, question when it comes to community, uh, which we'll explore. Now, before I go to the main uh, thing, I'll tell you why this is very important and why for me, uh, you know, uh, community should uh, look at innovation culture uh, with a true impact. So why? So most of the time uh, you find that uh, someone just needs that platform or that push or, you know, a place where they can speak their mind, feel they, that they belong and view the next uh, solution for their community or themselves. As on people. Uh, so when people think about developer experience, uh, they just think that these guys who are half baked and they want to go out there, try to market the product and people will understand. But ideally, it, this is very complex, actually more than engineering itself when you do it at scale, but also when you're doing it with the intention. So you need to think about developer productivity, developer impact, and developer satisfaction which gives you developer experience. And uh, you have to ask, of course, where there are no communities, it's silos. And when you open up, you'll have teamwork working into communities. And of course, they are more strategic than just, uh, you know, ensuring that uh, they are meeting every day. And of course, there are strategies like listening, exploring, learning and adjusting, focusing and realigning, and then linking and leveraging all that teamwork effort. And of course, Collaboration happens where now work processes, relationship, purpose, complexity, and simplicity are broken down into one, which forms the ideation of what people want to be together. So ideation, fresh ideas are appreciated uh, through community. And then, of course, the uh, hospitable and intentional, uh, intentional environment, which is required for these ideas to thrive. And then new ideas are born, which balances, you know, hunting and gardening of resources when it comes to uh, the growth and sustainability of our community. Then, of course, if you have these ideas, you need to implement them. And this is where most people fail, uh, even as small community or large communities, and even business, because business is a collection of community who believe in a certain angle of uh, doing things and achieving them. And here you need to have big good, uh, you know, if you really you want to uh, ensure that this idea uh, are scaling, then you need to provide the why these need to be implemented because implementation is really hard. So if the ideas are not implemented, they're just as good as they did not exist. And uh, you need to also get the champion, get the right technology, uh, you know, get the economic, uh, economic driving forces uh, where you need to know that just having the technology or having engineers in the room is not as equal as innovation. You can have all the best engineers, but if they don't find the why or what, of why they should buy the midnight oil implementation, then you either get half baked solutions or sometimes you don't get solutions at all and people will have excuses not to do, implement anything while they're over. Uh, so in this case, you start creating the value for everyone but where there is no value uh, to stakeholders uh, there is no innovation because at the end of the day those are the guys who keep the light on but people are always ready to uh, you know provide uh, payment where there is value and in this case you need to find strategies for effective value delivery uh, because at the end of the day the value that is not really uh, known to people then of course we need to balance things like business versus innovation and culture and timeline because at the end of the day a good idea today uh, or, or tomorrow might not be good today so you need to find that balance where you present a solution at the right time and you can see even how AI has come about now that it just came last year November to start uh, it was there along for 15 years in different forms and factor and of course uh, you know last year it was a uh, a hard moment for everyone and the, the many people could find the user. You can see that scaling very fast and that's technology world over. Uh, so, you know, there are people who also build communities to grow the organization, there are people build to get the impact, but the key takeaway is uh, always tinkering around with different things 
uh, you know, where you have, you want to find out or work around, as I said, and uh, see what happens. So I've recommended a few books here, but of course there's a recommendation uh, that I have uh, down the, uh, at the end of the slides. Uh, but basically you need to find the core and the edge of what you're building. And then how do you frame it to your customer or to your community? And then of course you combine the creativity uh, curation uh, considering diversity is key because people are not the same, people are not brought up the same. Those, uh, you know, culture nuances uh, ensure that people have this, you know, the middle ground where they can uh, understand it. Then, of course, build something around that and give someone a platform, give everyone a platform to build something out of it. Yeah, so also personally, as a community leader or person who wants to really uh, build something out of the community, you need to brand yourself consistently, brand what you do consistently, and of course, rebrand. So there's always that iterative uh, uh, loop where you need to brand. But that's basically mostly the nuances of yesterday. So how do you and realign? Because uh, sometimes you might think you will figure out the community and then technology changes or the focus changes internally, externally, and you need to repurpose. So therefore, key fundamental, uh, fundamental pillars. Um, one of them is fostering a sense of belonging. Uh, you have to design that belonging. And I, uh, when I attended CMX this year, I got a really nice book on how to design belonging. And it was it is quite a fascinating book. You can check it out. Then, of course, implementing a robust framework. Uh, where you establish clear processes and structures to guide community with transparency and with intention for the community to self-sustain and self-run. Because you want to secure internal buying because communities sometimes can be very expensive. And you know, whenever you're spending the dollars in the initial day or foundational uh, days, you need that you know, drive, you need that internal uh, buying that people will not always forsake you because they're spending the money and they're not seeing uh, why they're spending the money. Ensuring long-term and sustainability. So in this case, uh, we'll, uh, we'll all we'll explore each. So in this case, as we said, uh, you need to build more of a family where the value are shared, but of course, uh, with uh, recognition that the diversity and encourage active participation uh, where the people who have been coming to that community can be able to uh, nurture others so that they can elevate them to the next level. And then you have more of a sustainable kind of engagement on different aspects. Then, of course, members can be the co-creators uh, to create value and ownership. And, of course, impact on retention and engagement where people have strong and reliable commitment so that if uh, they need or they grow, they need to grow, they can grow within the community. Here, there's a case study of uh, Google open source community uh, uh, where they have been uh, resulted in a robust developer ecosystem driving continuous innovation and improvement. Uh, for the longest, I think uh, Google has been doing community, especially developer community, and they have impacted different sectors uh, of the ecosystem through this community, including open source. Uh, then securing internal buying, of course, you need to align with organization goals, ensure that uh, leadership plays a vital role in championing the community. Possibly the CTO or the CEO should be uh, part of the community and understand why it's very important to the core strategy and core mission of the company. Uh, and of course, the importance of internal support is very, very vital. I cannot insist because you need resources, you need funding, you need cross-department collaboration. Uh, and you need that feedback loop to make sense to the whole company, as well as when the resources start coming more, you're able to manage them. Of course, uh, the Google Integrated Programs, where you find there's a commitment in ensuring sometime they, uh, you know, implement some of the needs in the community and address the pain points that community faces. And the only way to get that feedback loop is to make sense in terms of uh, strategy and innovation in that area. Yeah, so for long-term sustainability, uh, you need to develop onboarding process so that when the team scales, people are not grappling to know uh, where things are. Uh, invest in community managers. Uh, there are companies that do not, actually company re, uh, companies recently started hiring uh, community managers 10 years ago, that's when community managers became a big thing. 
but I say, essentially, if you have this in mind, if you're starting a community, you should be planning to, you know, uh, how do you sustain that process? Uh, and in this case, monitor and evaluate, re-strategize, as you said, is an iterative process. And then, of course, from day one, plan for some scalability. And in this case, uh, there are a couple of, uh, you know, uh, experiences that I had with BlackBerry uh, back in the day when they were launching Z10. And uh, I could see how this uh, could drive the innovation and acceptance of Zeton as a new phone that was competing with the iPhone uh, of the day. Uh, so here it was just new um, in terms of uh, developer community. There are no many communities to learn from. And of course, you also, you also needed a platform to chat beyond events, beyond Akron, beyond BlackBerry Jam. For Atlassian, at least there were a couple of experiences there where we, you know, you learn from other leaders. There are some add-ons, there's some limitation. Uh, there's an online platform over time, which actually has improved the experiences uh, for me. It's always intentional to create content and share it, and even to break it down for someone who is present. Of course, uh, for Africa Stocking and C4D Lab, uh, with Africa Stocking, it's very, it's very interesting because even the mission is empowering, empowering local developers. And uh, here, you know, the strategy is to focus on regional, uh, given that we have Francophone, we have, uh, you know, uh, Anglophone and uh, English-speaking countries. Uh, of course, there are outliers who speak Arabic and so on and so forth. So if you don't get that from the day one, you might have a challenge uh, to understand even how to penetrate some of this uh, market in terms of community. And of course, you need to, one of the things that actually I learned is that you have to develop that pipeline end to end. And that's why now you need uh, accelerator kind of programs uh, and, uh, you know, partners who come on board to ensure that, you know, the developers who are building solutions, they're able to raise funds, they're able to scale them in different markets. Things like marketplace become very important. And after for c for the lab which is a, an academia innovation lab, was meant to guide you know the innovation that student and postgraduate are building and research department see the light of the day in terms of implementation and funding that flows in part to scale their mass uh, businesses and these are uh, supposed to last for 15 years i think we are like in year eight and already they are building an innovation park for ai which is super super amazing things like innovation week has have scaled across africa just because we uh, really envision that plan of engaging different countries, different about leaders, as well as different innovation ecosystem to come in and share their nuances and the, some of their, their challenges so that we don't uh, grapple with them as we build. Uh, of course, uh, before closing, uh, so I would encourage mostly to apply some of these strategies in case maybe uh, or borrow some of them because I know because this is not a blanket for everything, for all communities. But ideally, uh, there is more. It's just a, this is just a position for, for, for now. But of course, without tooling, it's very uh, crazy to really return on uh, uh, ROI. And uh, for us, of course, Bevy has uh, been a great tool for, for us, especially because they have an API. And since we're in API business, we understand the power of, you know, collecting uh, data, analyzing that data into information and making uh, it advise the direction you take as a company. Uh, so we built Arachnid, which was, uh, which connects the data from the API, uh, compares it to the data that we are collecting to the people who are using our product and even have the ability to measure the conversion rate, the conversion time and make decision based on that. And even uh, determine the budget uh, for customer acquisition. And the customer is not necessarily a developer because the developer is the engine that uh, you know makes the customer uh, happy. Uh, so here, customer could be a corporation X or executive Y who really uh, wants their communication to be more top notch and uh, 2G enabled. And this actually plays a key role. Of course, documentation has played a key role in terms of ensuring that uh, when we are asleep, someone can still build and scale. And internally, of course, API uh, that connects all these and, and makes sense. But uh, again, these are tools that have made us scale and I'll tell you why. So, so 
Yeah. One, communicate value clearly internally and ensure that you must stakeholders early, as you mentioned earlier, and demonstrate alignment uh, with, the team, with, the, with the team internally. And uh, I would like us to uh, ensure that we identify key stakeholders in this case. Uh, there is, for developers, there's three arms of key stakeholders. Of course, there's marketing, which is always have the budget and they have been doing return of investment uh, in, the long, in the long term in, in different companies. So if you align here, you're not really uh, in a place where you always need the budget. But of course, engineering, they're interested in the feedback and building tools that people want. Uh, and also the buy-in, of course, and, uh, because you might find engineers who are like, okay, why do we need communities more? I uh, would be rather writing code than uh, you know uh, presenting to communities. But of course, if there is no one using your tools, then uh, you, it's, it's, it's as good as not doing it. Uh, of course, executive, as much as everyone has buy-in, of course, the executive uh, overseer of you know the execution of what both want and the company key stakeholders. So they are very uh, vital when it comes to uh, sustainably running the community. Um, in terms of growth, look at uh, creating inclusive environments, uh, diversity and inclusion is a crucial for fostering a sense of belonging. And uh, sometimes, you know, some of the initiatives that are there for diversity might not work for everyone, uh, even if they, they sound like they can work for everyone. Uh, like for us, when we started uh, Women in Tech, we wanted people to write more code, to be better engineers but also again, to be able to understand why, you know, uh, certain solution done certain way. Um, of course, be open about uh, what you are planning. Uh, this could be facilitated internally through forums, chat and, uh, you know, uh, standups. Uh, provide support structures such as mentorship program and onboarding uh, resources so that people can self on board and uh, convert quickly. Because have an awarding program, shout outs, public acknowledgements, which can actually motivate people. You might be surprised uh, in the developer world where people uh, love swag. Uh, we've not been having swag for the last three years when you've been running this for me, but because we are open about it, uh, we are able to really uh, build value, true value for the developers who are coming. But ideally, we are almost getting closer to really having such, such uh, giveaways, which really makes a difference. Um, let's talk about uh, AR, uh, uh, pyrimetrics, AARR pyrimetrics. And here we are talking about awareness, acquisition, activation, retention, and referral, and revenue. Now, you have to understand a few things about this uh, pyrimetrics. So this is what most marketing uh, use. It's a study done in the Ivy League. Uh, <clears throat> And uh, you have to be cognizant that sometimes community will stop at, you know, uh, acquisition. And then, then you hand, hand over to salespeople or to engineering to, uh, to make sure that the customer is retained and they are, they are making revenue. But of course, everyone who is spending money uh, with you, they want you to also show how you are you know, getting that money back. So in this case, uh, for us, we have uh, diversified, but uh, before that, I'll give uh, maybe case and point for MongoDB. So MongoDB- Hey, Michael. Case. Yes. I'm sorry to interrupt. We own, we're over time a little bit, so I need you to finish your thought and wrap it up, okay? Okay. So Thank no you. problem, I can share this presentation if need be, but uh, I'm almost done. Uh, I can actually go to the marketplace uh, just to explain why uh, revenue is important when you're building a community. So especially for developer, you can actually have a marketplace where they can build and ship their product as well as you generate revenue. But as I finish, um, so there is a, the last pillar, which is ensuring long-term sustainability. And this is where it ties back to the revenue part of, of the business, because at the end of the day, uh, in the long term, they want to see us uh, convert, they want to see the revenue that we're generating. But this uh, iteration, uh, uh, you know, uh, design or dot uh, has helped us, because at the end of the day, you can see our products at the center, 
And then we're always combating using uh, a alternative method where we have internal community, we engage academia, especially engineering and computer science. So this could be specific to our, our world. But also we have different products that are being built through AT labs. And then of course, showcasing a success stories where you're supporting branch, which is a load application app and filter, and then developer communities. So thank you so much. I can stop there, but if you're on LinkedIn, you can connect. Thank you so much, Michael. I know there's so much to go over. So maybe we can talk about some kind of follow-up blog post um, to make sure that all of your information is shared and, and our members can get a look at, at what you're look, working on. Thanks again, Michael. No worries, uh, Beth. Uh, I don't know if I have two minutes to take two questions or any questions. No, we're over time, so we got to move right along. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, Thank you, everyone, for joining and listening in. I appreciate it.